We have seen Jesus say that he is the good shepherd. We have seen Jesus say that he is the resurrection and the life. And in our Sunday school lesson this week, Jesus, he likens himself to a vine. Vines in general, we know that they, again, they're able to grow. They are living. They're able to pull in minerals through their roots. And so in Jesus today, he says, I am the true vine. In other words, Jesus is saying that he is living. So our lesson opens today with Jesus stating that he again is the true vine. And then he tells us there that the father is the vine dresser. As you have heard me preach over the past few weeks, the Lord, he is a gardener and he loves to tend to his garden. The Lord's main focus in his garden is tending to the true vine, specifically tending to the branches that are growing off of the true vine. So who do you suppose are the branches that are growing from the true vine? Well, that will be all of us. All of us who have chosen to genuinely believe in the only begotten son. Again, Jesus, he is living. And we who all believe in him, we are growing off of that living vine. We are, I tell you today, we are now living as well. Now we'll see Jesus, he makes a very interesting statement there in that second verse where Jesus, he states that the father intending to the branches that are growing off of the true vine, he takes away the branches that aren't bearing any fruit. And then we'll see that Jesus said that he prunes the fruit bearing branches that are growing on the true vine. So this statement from Jesus, it raises a question. Can we lose our salvation? All of us who have chosen to genuinely believe can we lose that salvation? I want you to know today that you cannot lose your salvation if you have genuinely believed in the only begotten son of God. So in his letter, we'll see that Peter, he wrote that our inheritance, our inheritance being heaven, eternal life. He said that it does not fade away as it is reserved for those that believe. Again, our salvation, Peter said, it is kept by the power of God through faith. Now, Peter, I want you to understand that he was teaching what Jesus taught him. Jesus said that he knows his sheep. They hear his voice and they follow him. As we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week, Jesus said that to his sheep, he gives them eternal life and that they shall never perish. So on that note, and Jesus said that nobody can take his sheep out of his hand, nor can nobody take the sheep out of the father's hand because the father, he is greater than all. So I want you to know today, the Lord, he is faithful. He is faithful to us. He is faithful to what he has promised. What has he promised us? Well, in the third chapter of John's gospel in the 16th verse, we find that the Lord has promised us everlasting life. Whoever believes in the only begotten son, we are told, will not perish, but will have everlasting life. So we must believe that. We must trust in that today. Again, I want you to understand that God, he is faithful. He is not one to break his promises. You will not lose your salvation if you have genuinely believed in the only begotten son of God. So when we take a look at that second verse once again, pay very close attention to the fact that the branches being taken away, that they are in Christ. They are attached to Christ. Some of us, we, we stop bearing fruit because we no longer are able to bear fruit. Maybe we have gotten older or it's simply time for us to rest. All of this pruning, I want you to understand that it is for the purpose of helping the fruit bearing branches so that they be able to bear more and more fruit. As the Lord, he desires for his branches. He desires for much fruit to be bare. So in order for us to bear fruit, and Jesus tells us there in the fourth and in the fifth verse that we must be attached to Christ. In the fourth verse, Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. And then there in the fifth verse, Jesus, we'll see, he repeats himself. He says, I am the true vine. You are the branches. He says there, abide in me and I in you, and you will bear much fruit. Understand today, you cannot bear fruit that is holy and righteous if you are not connected to Christ. 
Sadly, there are many people in the world today that believe that they can bear fruit that is holy and righteous. I want you to understand today that if you're not attached to Jesus, if you are of no faith, you're not going to bear fruit that is holy and righteous. You'll certainly bear some kind of fruit, but it will not be fruit that is of God. It will be fruit that is of this world. Now, those that, that try to bear fruit and are not connected to Christ, Jesus, he said there in the sixth verse, such a branch that it is withered. These branches, as you have heard me discussed in recent weeks, they are wild growing branches. They are wild growing vines in God's garden. Essentially, again, they are a major threat. While growing vines, I want you to understand that they pose a major threat to gardens. Anything growing in the garden, any fruit bearing plants in a garden that is growing, a vine is a major threat. The reason why it is a major threat is because it has the ability to climb. It has the ability to choke out. In other words, it has the ability to kill. It can hinder growth. It can stop growth. It can stop fruit bearing growth as well. And so we see why it is so important to the father to tend to the true vine, to tend to the branches that are growing off that true vine, because the Lord, he desires for us to bear much fruit. And so he has to remove, he has to clear out any wild growing vines, any wild growing branches that may cause us to stop bearing any fruit when we are growing off the true vine of Jesus Christ. So again, we'll see Jesus, he encourages us there in the seventh and the eighth verse. He encourages us to abide in him. He said there, whatever we ask will be done if, pay attention, if it glorifies the Lord. The Lord, he desires for us to bear much fruit. And if whatever we ask for can lead to us bearing much fruit, fruit that again is holy and righteous, understand today, the Lord will give, the Lord will move, the Lord will do. So do you understand, do you realize that the Lord loves you? If you have not realized that today, I tell you, God, he loves you. He loves all of those who have, by their free will, have freely chosen to love him. So at this point in our lesson, we'll see Jesus, he speaks of this love. He tells us there in the 11th verse that, he has shared with us the divine truth so that his joy may remain in us and so that our joy will be full. You see, Jesus, he understood very well the kind of world that we are living in. And as I have shared with all of you in recent weeks, the condition of our world is simply not conducive for anything good to grow in it. Yet, look at us, all of us who have genuinely believed we are still standing strong in this world as a tree of God, bearing much fruit. We bear much fruit today because of the Lord's tender, loving care. Yes, with the love that he has shown us, we should share that same love with all of those that are around us. And in doing so, we will bear much fruit. And Jesus, we will see, he closes out our lesson there in the 16th and in the 17th verse by saying just that to us. Jesus says that he chose us, he loved us, so that we can go out into the world and bear fruit. And again, I want you to understand that that fruit is love. So in the end, I want you to understand today that it is all about love, love that is of God. You see, the love that is of the world, it pales into comparison against the love that is of God. It is not true. It is not sincere. So. If we truly desire to move out of love, we must, again, be attached to Jesus so that we can know what true love is. When we are connected to Jesus, his life, it flows through us. When we are attached to Jesus, his love, it flows through us. And when we are attached to Jesus with that life and that love flowing through us, we are able to bear fruit that truly is good, fruit that truly is holy and righteous. So if you desire to bear good fruit, fruit that is holy and righteous, I encourage you today, find Jesus, get attached to Jesus, love the Lord with your whole heart, and you'll be able to bear fruit that is holy and righteous. Mm -hmm.